Hey everybody, welcome to our advanced markets training on Friday here, uh, Mario Delgadillo out of Dallas, Texas. And uh, what we're going to do first, guys, is we're going to jump through and go through a um, illustration uh, that is a little unique, like I shared with you guys. Uh, it was a scenario where I really had to think, which way am I going to attack this? Um, and uh, and then I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I think it, it turned out pretty good. We've got an appointment on Monday. So retired gentleman, 65, his wife, 68. Uh, he retired from United as an airline pilot. He's now working again for a smaller uh, airline, but that's just because he loves to do it. Um, now, as we got into his portfolio, he's got an IRA that's about 1.2 million. Uh, so we know that that's qualified money. He mentioned that because he was able to uh, uh, bring over some other accounts underneath this particular company's management, that they he, he was able to negotiate um, his fee from one percent down to 0.4 percent which is really good so his money management fee is down uh out of that 1.2 million okay twenty two thousand dollars of it has been converted to roth and additionally he's got a bunch of other accounts some of them are under their umbrella some of them are not but so he's got a cash account for $100,000. That's just checking and saving. He's got credit union CD that has $260,000. And you see, I notice here I put free because that means that there's no parameters on, you know, when you put a, a, something into a CD, sometimes it's a six month CD, a year. Basically, they can't do anything with it until that, that time frame is up. So that's free. He's got a traditional IRA that has $100,000. He's got a savings at Schwab. Uh, that is uh, cash and stock. That's another hundred thousand. It was a money market account. He's got two hundred and seventy-four thousand with Fidelity. His wife's got forty-five thousand in a Roth. He's got an E-Trade account at a hundred thousand. He's got a UBS account that was a CD that has two hundred fifty-eight thousand. Uh, he's got about fourteen thousand in crypto. Twenty ounces of gold, which I calculated out to be about fifty-two thousand eight forty. Okay. Um, and now he's also got two fixed index annuities already. They're with CoreBridge, 250000 each. And they're set to start taking income at 72 years old. Okay. One is a joint annuity and he'll get about $29,000 a year. The other is an individual annuity. Can y'all check who is that? That's Clint. Um, nope, that's Nicole. All right. Make sure y'all are, are muted. Uh, one's an individual Okay, and uh, they're both under a year, so they're pretty brand new. His home, primary residence, is valued at seven hundred eighty thousand, um, which is paid off. He's got a condo that's valued at a hundred grand, um, and that's paid off. And he's got a cash value life insurance policy. wasn't really sure um, what that was. Uh, he it sounded like it's just a, just an old school whole life policy that built up some cash value. Um, now. When we look at his retirement, okay, so when he retires, what type of income is he going to have? Uh, his United pension is about 6000 a month. His two uh, FIAs, these two fixed index annuities, one's going to pay out about twenty four sixteen, one's going to pay out twenty eight thirty three. He's getting Social Security for 4500 She's getting Social Security for eighteen, and they've got a rental for about 100 bucks. So come out to about $15,000. His overhead, I didn't write it here, but his overhead is only like $5,000, okay? So a lot here. Now, any of you guys want to give it a shot, let's spend a couple of minutes and just tell me some things that are sticking out to you when you look at this. Anybody, go ahead. Most of it is taxed, taxable. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of cash. It's actually, yeah. once, you, once you break it down, it's it's like a 50-50 split because that IRA is so big and it's qualified. Um, and then he's got like a traditional IRA. Um, once you lay it all out, which I did, and I'm going to show you guys, it's about 50-50. 50% of his portfolio is qualified and about 50% of it is non-qualified. So it, 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 it is it is kind of 50-50 split. But but yes, there is a lot of money there that that has needs to be taxed. And then there's a lot that still has that has already been taxed. What else? I should be hearing from some of the folks that actually do fix index annuities already because this is your wheel well. 
You can help with that CD to gain a lot more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a couple CDs, yeah. The ones that stick out to me, he's already got the fixed index annuities for two of them, is mm -hmm. the IRA for $1.2 million. He's got his wife's Roth, the Fidelity, his, what is that, savings at Schwab, mm -hmm. the other traditional IRA, and there's a lot that's open to market downturn. So there's a couple of things that, that he mentioned to me um, as I was looking at this. He said, look, originally, you know, a couple of years ago, I was open to putting about a million dollars into a fixed index annuity, right? He said, it turned out I only did about 500,000, but I'm open to it, right? Um, he's like, because I like the guarantees. Um, so that was one thing he said. He did say that one of the primary things he was worried about was loss, okay? And so when I looked at this, I was like, holy crap, like, where do I even start, dude? This is a lot, right? So the first thing that I did, guys, is I I um I went and I grouped these together just so visually I could get a better look at what he's got. Can you guys see the Excel spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay. So this is what I did. I just created this. Um, don't judge me. I'm not the best Excel guy, but thought I did pretty good. So <clears throat> what I did here, see, this is qualified, right? 401k 1.2 in a traditional IRA. So I put like a little sub total there of 1.3. Now I added his wife's in this category for 45 in this E-Trade for 100. Why? Because even though those two are not qualified, they're variable, okay? He could lose money there. So what I did is I said, okay, 1.3 million is qualified, but total he's got 1.45 million that is variable and that is at risk, Okay. So then I said, okay, let's look at indexed. The two FIAs he has, guys, with CoreBridge, they're guaranteed income products, okay? Now, for those of you guys that, that haven't yet heard this before, I usually share it this way. There's three types of uh, products, generally speaking, when you look at FIAs. On this side of the pendulum, it's transactional in nature. Hey, if I've got 250,000, What's the guaranteed monthly income I can buy from you right now? It's like a transaction, right? In a transactional side, on this side of the house, on this side of the pendulum, that $250,000, you don't have, um, you don't really have accumulation on it anymore, right? It's not like, oh, I have 500,000 sitting in an account. No, you bought an income. So you kind of give away your accumulation. Does that make sense? Now, on the other side of the pendulum, so you go from this side to this side, on this side, this is the person that says, hey, I've got $500,000, I don't even need the income. Just protect it and grow it to the moon, right? That's an accumulation play, that's the power accumulator, right? It's like, I say, set it and forget it. Long-term storage, just let that bad boy grow, guaranteed against loss, no fees, go, go, go. Then right down the middle, so you've got, transactional buying an income. Then you've got on this side, you've got just grow, grow, grow. And then down the middle, you've got the best of both worlds. You have a product uh, that's similar to like the uh, accumulator plus 10 or the flex accumulator, where that 500,000, you still have an opportunity to grow it, right? There's still a cash value association. But when you're ready, you can flip on a guaranteed income writer and get a guaranteed income for the rest of your life. So it's right down the middle. So it, so my, my idea is, okay, where is he? Is he, he's already got a fixed index annuity, which technically means his money's protected, but is it? Because he gave away his cash value to buy an income, right? Is, okay, well, is he just somebody who wants to kind of set it and forget it? Well, how do I determine if it's somebody who's like a set it and forget it person? I go back and find out his, his fixed uh, income, right? The income that's going to come in guaranteed versus the overhead that he has. So do you guys know what I'm talking about right there? So if his overhead is nine grand and his, his guaranteed income is 11, he needs the income. If his overhead is 4,000, and his guaranteed income is 15, he doesn't need it. 
So I would think more to this side where it's like, hey, just grow the money, no fees, guaranteed against loss with bonus. And here's what you have available should you ever need it. Does that make sense? So when I went to here, I said, okay, you've got some indexed money, okay? But it's a guaranteed check. Right. So it's not like you're growing it, like you can go out there and be aggressive, like you can have a good year or a bad year. You just bought something. Okay. But it's still guaranteed and protected. Now, he has a bunch of non qualified money, which is cash. Now, cash, can you lose cash? I mean, technically, if you if you lost it, like you had it in a jar underneath your bed and you couldn't find it, but you don't lose cash because it's not in the market. It's just cash. Right. This money in the credit union, if you reflect back, it was a CD. Can you lose money on a CD? No. This here, this Charles Schwab was a savings. Uh, it was a mar money market account. Can you lose money there? No. Fidelity, cash, this was in stocks, okay? Uh, UBC or UBS, that was a CD. And then gold, right? I guess gold technically can fluctuate, right? But I just left it there either way. So my point is, is this. He's got a lot of cash, that has zero risk, right? Zero risk, and here there's zero risk. So when I add them two together, 1.1 and five, it seems to be pretty damn similar, right? 1.45 is at risk, and 1.5 is protected, right? So when I look at protection, okay, his portfolio is about 50% protected. Typically what I say to somebody, is I would recommend that 30% minimum is guaranteed. He's at 50. Have I lost anyone yet? Give me a thumbs up if you're, if you're still keeping up. Okay, because I'm trying to... Guys, you guys will hear me say this often, that our job is to present a case, right? I'm presenting to, to the jury here, right, why he needs to do this. So I had to step back and tell a story. So from a, from a protection perspective, I'm okay with where he's at. Because half of, his, um, half of his money is protected. And if you reflect back to here, okay, this is all guaranteed money right here. He got 15,000 in guaranteed income checks. Okay, with the exception of that rental, which is a hundred bucks that doesn't even matter. So if if he's 50% protected in his portfolio and he's also got fifteen thousand dollars a year in guaranteed checks, what's my play? How can I attack this? Any ideas? Any thoughts? I'm not sure if this is the question, but I'm thinking whatever's going to give him a greater return since we're going to go with the side of the pendulum where we're just going to take off and grow the money. Right. Absolutely. So this is the this is the route that I took, because if I look at protection and accumulation, well, the third thing that we usually remember, this is this is a annuity training. This is an annuity lead. This is what he what he checked the box for. Right. The third thing we want to do is liquidity. Right. Why do we need liquidity? Right. Well, because he needs an income. But does he need the income? No. I even asked him, uh, you know, this are you do you have children and grandchildren that, you know, you want to build? Is this more like a legacy play? Do you want to build up a ton of money and leave it? He said to me, he said, I'm good with spending every last dime while I'm alive. I just don't want to lose it. And I and I want to be able to know that I'm doing right by. It. So he's not like he's like, yeah compile three grand for my grandbabies. He was like, no, I'm good, right? For whatever reason, right? So um, so it's not a, not a liquidity play. Protection is already taken care of. So you're right, it's an accumulation play. So when I looked at these, cash, you get no growth on, right? If it's in a savings account, you're gonna get 0.25%, right? Uh, this CD, he's getting like 5%. This also was a savings, it was a money market. So I went down this list and what I found was he was getting five to 6% growth here. Oops. On this money, okay? 
So my idea was this. What if I took this credit union CD for 260 and I took this UBS account for 358 and we moved it here at 618,000. So now we bring the guaranteed products to 1.1 and the cash is at five point uh, five hundred thousand. It's still the same though, guys. It's still one point five and one point four. So it's basically shifting some of this money in the guaranteed and protected, but putting six hundred thousand dollars of it into an area where we're going to get okay nine to fourteen percent with a fixed index annuity. Does that make sense, guys? So that was my play. From your perspective, sir, it really is like moving money from one pocket to another. Why? Because this right here, you're not getting anything with it. But if I did this, at least a good portion of it, you're going to get, you know, some pretty good growth. So now how in the world do I present this? Now, before I go into the presentation and show you guys the numbers, timeout, questions, what are your thoughts? Were any of you guys thinking the same thing? Priscilla. Why are for the, I have a question on the 401k. You're not touching that at all? No, um, no, I could, but right. for, from this perspective, um, you could easily do that. He didn't, he seemed pretty happy with it. When I was talking to him, he seemed like he was pretty happy with it because he, um, he was, uh, he, he negotiated down a good rate to 4%. Um, last year, on this 401k, he actually sent me. Last year, he earned 31% on it. And the 10-year return was 9.1. And the reason behind that is because he he uh, he told it to me, but I couldn't write it down as fast. He has, uh, how did we lose two people? That's wild. Um, apparently, this isn't that good. Um, <laughs> um, so... He had told me that he has like three friends that he really, really respects and they're very wealthy. They told him uh, like a, uh, a way to structure his 401k, a certain portion of it uh, almost at cash, but has a minimal risk and a certain portion in this stock and a certain portion in this, and it's been smoking it. So I'm not even going to go down that path, right? Sometimes you have to pick and choose and try to identify what is his biggest pain point. Right. It's not his 401k. He thinks he's doing pretty good with his 401k. So I'm not even going to go down that. Now, if I can show him a really good return on the 618, I've had plenty of people come back and be like, man, what if I did that 618 and put another five in? What would that get me? Right. I'd rather do that. Yeah. And try to go and blow up the 401k or attack it. And in my gut, it feels like he's pretty happy with it. Got it. Does that make sense? Anything else you guys are seeing? That way you keep them in a way diversified. Mm -hmm. And you don't sound like you just want to take the entire amount. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's a good point, Isabel. A lot of times, um, especially we just meet these guys. Uh, and I, I call a spade a spade. I tell them, you know, sometimes when I need to, I'm like, hey, I'm just some guy you met on the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh they do have a certain amount, even broom leads, which are really good. They do have a certain amount of like standoffishness. Like let's keep some space between me and this guy. Cause I don't really know who he is yet. So if you come in and you're like, Hey, that 1.4, let's put it in the thing. They're going to be like, easy, homie, relax, relax. You know? So I'd rather at times now, remember at the beginning, he showed me that he, he actually gave me right here, 500,000 is what he told me to do an illustration off of, okay? So I did do a 500,000 illustration and I also did a 618. So I gave him the 500 and rarely do I do this, but at this point, it made sense to me. I also drew up the 618 because I said to him, those CDs, this is a uh, fixed index annuity is basically a CD on the steroids, right? So it's like, you like CDs, you got $618,000 in CDs that are getting 5%. So why not put it in a, a, a fixed index annuity, which is a CD on steroids and get nine to 14%, right? So here's where using your tools comes into play. So let me, let me pull one thing up. 
And I'm gonna tell you what I decided to do when I had him on the Zoom, okay? Okay, so when I had him on the Zoom, I said, okay, sir, listen, I know you just purchased a fixed index annuity not even a year ago. Um, so I'm not gonna take you through the A to Z soup to nuts training uh, education that I usually do on fixed index annuities. But I also don't want to assume that you got the appropriate education there. So I'm gonna cover a couple of things that I think are really, really important, okay? So the first thing I did, and I wrote the notes, damn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said this to him, this was my first, my first thought. I said, sir, 50% of your money is protected. That's good, okay? But the 50% that's, that's, um, that's getting protected is only getting about five to 6% growth, okay? Some of it is getting no growth. That's not good, okay? Um, thanks, Isabel. Good luck on your appointment. Um, so I said, we want to keep you protected without sacrificing your growth, okay? So what I did is I showed him the presentation, and there's a couple of things that I showed him, okay? I said, like I said, I wasn't going to go through it all. Um, what I did want to do is I actually started here, okay? I don't know if you guys have seen me go over this. This is a newer slide that I've added, but I call it the retirement triangle, also known as the retirement conundrum. This is what people find themselves in. And I said, sir, tell me if you've experienced this at one time or another. When I say to my financial advisor, I want to protect, right? They say, sure, no problem. But if you want to protect, you've also got to be willing to sacrifice accumulation, right? So if I want to protect my money, you can, you're not going to be able to grow it as much. Are you okay with that? Damn, okay, I guess, right? Then you flip it. Hey, financial advisor, let's go accumulate. Sure, but you've got to be willing to sacrifice protection, right? Usually they're like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Okay, we need to do both. You notice I said we need to do both. You need to protect and you need to grow, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. Why? Because if you don't get this protection growth formula right, if and when you introduce income, you're shot. What, are, what does that mean? Simple. If you're not growing, you're growing and protecting your snowball at a certain rate every year, when you introduce income, that income depletes the snowball, and now you're back to work at Walmart. So we can get the protection accumulation ratio good and proper and done right so that when you introduce income, not only is that income enough money for you to live on, but it's not going to deplete the snowball so it runs out of money. And he was like, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay, good. So this is where I'm, I'm selling him on, on what, what I'm going to be able to accomplish and kind of setting the appropriate expectation. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about, um, the next thing I showed him was here. Okay, so I went to what is a fixed index annuity? And again, I just took the approach, sir, I don't know who you worked with before. Um, so I don't want to assume that they covered everything correctly. Okay, so what is a fixed index annuity, right? We talked about the benefits of what is the annuity. We talked about how a uh, fixed index annuity protects against market volatility, helps you to beat inflation, and also has no fees. We then talked about safety, right, which is on everybody's mind. Talked about the difference between fractional reserve banking uh, and, and also the state guaranteed fund. Talked to him about Boley, okay, which was really eye-opening. He was like, what in the hell? That's crazy. Yeah, all of your banks are investing so much money in the insurance industry that they actually got restricted, right? So right here, if you're a bank in mine, we're getting such high returns uh, investing in the life insurance industry that they got restricted. Why aren't we doing it, right? Why aren't you flexing that muscle just as much as they are, right? So we we left this, we went into the actual illustration and I started out with uh, the 500,000, which is what he asked for, okay? <clears throat> so let me find it. Jeez, I got like a thousand screens up, guys, sorry. So when I went this route, okay, now here's, what, here's my uh, uh, objective here. I have to show him why this fixed index annuity basically kicks the crap out of the old one that he has. Does that make sense? So 
right out of the gate, I have to say, okay, so this fixed sentence annuity, so I start building up. Why do I select FNG? Because FNG has BlackRock as their money manager, um, and BlackRock is the beast, right? And because BlackRock is a beast, they give great accumulation and they give bonuses. I, I can tell you right now, you're not getting any bonuses on that 1.5 on cash, and you're definitely not getting any bonuses right now on your, on your 401k. So well, first things first is we're gonna introduce you to some bonuses. So then what I do is I go over here and I explain him why I've selected the balance asset five index, one year point to point with participation of 170, right? So a couple of things. Right now he's got an income rider, guaranteed income rider. That means that his wife and him are getting a guaranteed paycheck on that 500,000. From my perspective, with $15,000 in guaranteed paychecks, does he need to pay for another income rider? Uh-uh. He's going to have way more money than he needs with that 10% liquidity every year. So I'm not going to recommend it. So another tip, a feather in my cap is, sir, I don't want you to pay any more fees. Does he like me or does he does he like me, right? Oh, okay, good. No, you no, I don't want you. It doesn't make sense for you to pay fees, okay? But what I always say, and here's my, my standard cheesy dad joke, I always say, listen, if you're like most of my clients, when I say balance asset five index, one year point to point with participation of 170%, kind of sounds like Chinese, right? And they always go, yeah, I don't know what the hell that means. Okay, let me show you what it means, okay? So then we come over and I showed him this screen, right? You guys have seen this where I show point to point, they get a breakdown, then we show how we calculate the percentage, right? But remember, I'm still in this you are going to get in a better fixed index annuity mode, right? So then I take it here, boom. Let's take a look at actual numbers, okay? So I said, sir, you should see this first screen, boom. This client, here's, I always say, look at the issue dates, right? Can you guys see this okay? Do you want me to maximize it? Let me maximize, in case some of you haven't seen this, because this, this slide is powerful, okay? So here you'll see from nine, Nine of 23 to nine of 24, a person dropped in 117, grew by 12,000, now they're at 129. 10 of 23 to 10 of 24, dropped in 131, grew by 18,000 year one, May, they're now at 149, that's 14% growth, okay? Here's another one, here's a big one. 761,000, they made $106,000 year one, now they're at 867, that's 14% growth. Here's 178, they made 24,800, right? 202,000 is their ending value. Look at the dates. This is not 100 years ago. This was last month, right? And then here's a small one, a Roth, 11,000, 1,500. So again, am I showing him that this product performs better than what he has? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. So he's his mind is like tripping right now. He's like, whoa, crap. I didn't even know this type of product existed, right? So now we go back here and I say, so now that you know, okay, how this product actually works, let me give you the actual historical growth. So over the last 10 years on a rolling scale from December 23 to December 13, it performed at 8.85%. He's not getting 8.85% anywhere on that, that side with cash, okay? Now, uh, he did tell me in our conversation that he got cooked during the last crash in 08, so I hit this kind of hard. So this is the, the worst 10 years over the last 20, okay? 2008 was right here. Do you remember that? He goes, oh man, I got freaking killed. Yeah, in 2008, if you would had $500,000 here, not only would you have not lost a dime, you would have grew by 6.23%. You would have left that 10 year mark, mark with 914. And he cussed. <laughs> he actually cussed. He was like, oh, fuck. like, man, right? The best 10 years, over the last 20 was 09 to 19, it was 11.41, okay? What do you think about this growth? Man, this is great, awesome. Let me show you your numbers, okay? So now we came over here. So if we dropped 500,000 and just let it roll, we're gonna turn it to 1.1 in 10 years, okay? Now, what's cool about this is you have access to 10% of your money starting at year two to year 10. So if you needed it, which we know you don't, okay? If you needed it, starting at year two, you could take about 60 grand, okay? Uh, starting at year seven, you could take 100 grand, okay? 
And so we went through all of the, you know, all of the, uh, the, the uh, value add, you know, that I usually do the screen where I talk about from one pocket to another and do the side by side comparison. Uh, but before we were done, I said, but I say that you should, and I don't do this often, sir, but I really believe that 618 is the right move for you. And here it is. Okay. So we went to the 618 illustration and I uh, came here. I said in 10 years, we'd take it to 1.4. Okay. And, you know, we just went from there. So ultimately what it comes down to for him is I said, this is the question you need to ask yourself, sir. Do you think that your 260 and 358 in that CD is better here or taking it and just moving it here? They're both protected against loss. They both have no fees. One has historical performance from nine to 12% with bonuses. One is gonna get you a flat five to 6%. To me, it doesn't impact your day-to-day. -day. You don't need the money from an income perspective, but you have 10% accessibility of it starting at year two. To me, it's it's a no-brainer, right? So uh, that's my case. The the uh, the prosecution rests. <laughs> Let me stop recording.